has been closely tracking, even as Washington has formally designated the military takeover of Myanmar as a coup. Myanmar's army chief, General Min Ong Leng, has announced that the military ouster of Aung San Suu Kyi's government was in fact inevitable. In his first public comments since the coup, the general said that the military takeover was in line with the law after the government failed to respond to its grievances over electoral fraud allegations. He added that it was enacted after a lot of requests were made from within the country. General Lang was given legislative, judicial and executive powers, effectively returning Myanmar to military rule after a 10-year experiment with democracy. The speech was posted on the military's official Facebook page. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department has formally designated it as a military coup. Listen in. Uh, the United States is deeply concerned by the Burmese military's detention of civilian government leaders, including State Councilor Aung San Suu Kyi and civil society leaders. After a review of all the facts, we have assessed that the Burmese military's actions on February 1st, having deposed the duly elected head of government, constituted a military coup d'etat. The United States will continue to work closely with our partners throughout the region and the world to support respect for democracy and the rule of law in Burma, as well as to promote accountability for those responsible for overturning Burma's democratic transition. The designation means that the U.S. will not assist the Myanmar government with any more financial aid, though any impact will be mainly symbolic, as almost all assistance goes to non-governmental entities. The military was already under U.S. sanctions over its brutal campaign against the Rohingya minority. For more details about the developments in Myanmar, journalist Dave Grunbaum is now joining us live from Kuala Lumpur. Welcome to Beyond, Dave. My first question for you. Give us a sense of what's happening in Myanmar as of now. We know that the NLD leaders have told supporters to not take the coup lying down and use civil disobedience methods. So tell us more about the same. Yeah, well, last night you saw some real signs of that. On the streets of Yangon, the biggest city in the country, uh, people were honking their horns. People pulled out pots and pans to bang them on the streets and from their balconies as a sign to show that they are against this military coup. Today, a Myanmar civil disobedience group said that doctors at 70 hospitals across the country, doctors and other medical staff, have refused to work, again, to show that they are not going along with this military coup. There's also talk about possibly boycotting military-linked products. This could include certain cell phone services, brands of beer, you have to understand that the Myanmar military controls vast businesses across the country. Now, the natural follow-up question that comes up here, of course, is will we at some point in the days or weeks ahead see mass mobilization, thousands of people potentially marching down the streets in the main cities of Myanmar? I've spoken to people on the ground in Myanmar today who tell me there have been discussions about that, but no decisions have been made. That would be quite a risk for these people to take, because if you look at past history, when there were these types of mass demonstrations on the streets, the previous military junta sometimes reacted with not just force, but with deadly force. So these people would be taking quite a risk. And the visuals of that happening, of those type of demonstrations with thousands of people, would be the type of visual thing getting around the world that the military would not want out there. Right. Now, Dave, what is the condition of the detained leaders as of now, especially on San Suu Kyi? Yeah, well, a senior National League for Democracy official, her political party, says that Aung San Suu Kyi is in good health. He posted this on his Facebook page. He also says that she has been walking around the grounds of her compound in Naypyidaw, the capital. Now, we have not heard directly from Aung San Suu Kyi since the coup took place. There was a statement that came out on Monday in her name, but that statement was actually prepared in advance of the coup. It came out after the coup, but was prepared before in anticipation that the coup might happen. So we've not heard directly from her for days now. Right. My final question for you, Dave. A global criticism has poured in against the military in Myanmar, yet the military insists that they acted within the law. So can global powers come together with some strong action to make any change, or will the international community remain divided on how to respond to this crisis? Yeah, well, right now you're looking at it in some ways. You know, you're looking at certain Western countries that really want to come down hard on Myanmar as hard as they possibly can. They've got some limited leverage, though, in that case. They're joined by some Eastern countries as well. But then you've got countries such as China and Russia. Their militaries have strong, longstanding links with Myanmar's military. Uh, they're giving out muted responses. You haven't seen anything, uh, any statement from the UN Security Council yet, and that divide is a big reason why. 
What Myanmar also cares about is what the Association of Southeast Asian Nations says. And they basically have a policy of not getting deeply involved in other countries' internal affairs. So you've seen very muted responses from the other countries in Southeast Asia on this. Right, Davey, leave it there. Thank you so much for all your inputs and thank sure. you for joining us on this broadcast.